This week, let's talk about Pau Ferro fretboards. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started this week, just a reminder to subscribe down below and also click that bell icon to get all of my notifications. So this week we're gonna be talking about Pau Ferro. And in my hand, I have my new Jazz Master, Performer Jazz Master that I built uh, with a custom Ormuth body. And it's got this nice Fender Mexican made player series Pau Ferro fretboard. Uh, this was probably the best neck I, I could think to put on this. It goes great with the color combo and I really don't have any complaints about it, but there is some things that we need to touch on here. First, a little bit about Powell Ferro and why it's on these Mexican guitars by Fender now. Essentially, uh, a couple years ago, I think it was end of 2017, there was a new regulation put in place by CITES, which is a governing body that looks at endangered species, specifically in this case, uh, endangered woods and they outlawed rosewood exports between countries essentially unless you fill out a bunch of paperwork. So for manufacturers like Fender, um, obviously this would affect furniture companies as well, but for musical instruments, what we're talking about today, folks like Fender and anybody else that was using rosewood boards like Taylor and plenty of other folks, um, it really became a nightmare to ship guitars that were manufactured in one location and being sent to other places for sale. What Fender did to combat this is they changed all of their Squire rosewood boards over to Indian Laurel. They changed all their Mexican rosewood boards to Pau Ferro, and then they left the premium American guitars at Rosewood. Since 2017, there has been some amendments to the site's regulations. Um, essentially looking to you know allow musical instruments and musical instrument parts to kind of bypass you know this banning of rosewood i think specifically indian rosewood um, but from what i understand that necessarily hasn't gone through yet i think they were supposed to vote on it in may at a conference but that conference was canceled and pushed out till uh, the end of the summer so we'll see if rosewood makes a reappearance in the mexican line but i don't think that's going to happen I think that they actually did Fender a favor here and allowed them the ability to delineate between their different levels or tiers of guitars, keeping the rosewood on their classic American, uh, which you have to pay a little bit more for than say over the uh, Pau Ferro on their Mexican or the Indian Laurel on their Squires. So as I said, I've got this Pau Ferro board on my new Performer Jazzmaster that I built with a Warmoth body. Uh, you can see it's a little bit lighter than what you might see on a rosewood board. Uh, Feel-wise, it's very similar. Uh, I would almost call this one a little bit waxy though. I'm not sure if it's because of, you know, it's a little bit new and it doesn't maybe have as much of the finger grease on it, but a uh, little bit different feeling than the rosewood. I like it. I think it's a good um, substitute for rosewood. But one thing that keeps coming up online is how you can darken these boards to get them to look a lot more like that a rosewood and give you the contrast with you know your white pick guards, etc. Um, it doesn't really matter to me that much, but I thought you know this might be a cool video for you guys to see if I can darken this Pau Ferro board. Uh, I did a little bit of research online to see what works the best, and everything kept pointing to beeswax over say a lemon oil or something along that. Um, a couple videos actually pointed to this stuff here, which is the Fender Fingerboard Remedy. Uh, no endorsement here. I've never used this before. Well, maybe I used it once a while back, but uh, it's essentially the same as like lemon oil, except it has the beeswax in it. Uh, everything I read online basically says if you can use this. Um, now this says let it sit for 10 seconds before wiping it off. If you let it sit for more like a couple minutes, you can really penetrate the wood and get a darkening of your fretboard. So I've got my Rosewood fretboard Strat here now, and you can definitely see the fretboard is a little bit darker than the Pau Ferro fretboard on my Jazzmaster. I was thinking about a couple different ways I could do this video, uh, you know, just do the Jazzmaster and see before and after, but I think the best way to do it is actually to run the same process on this Rosewood board, as well as the Pau Ferro board, take before and after pictures of both and see if you know, it darkens the rosewood at all, if it only darkens the Pau Ferro, if the Pau Ferro can get as dark as this before, or if it can get as dark as this after it's been conditioned. So with that, I'm gonna take some before pictures here, 
head down to the shop, get the strings off these, condition both of the fretboards, and then take some after pictures and meet back here to compare the results. So back up from the shop and now you can see the conditioned Powell Ferrell fretboard. And that again was using that Fender Custom Shop fingerboard remedy. Um, on the rosewood board, if you see the before and after pictures that I just put up, um, not much of a difference. Um, but on the Powell Ferrell board, definitely noticed a huge difference in the color. Um, I wouldn't say it got as deep as say a, a darkening of a rosewood but it definitely darkened the Powell Ferro uh, quite a bit. It also brought out some of the uh, cool grains in the wood. I can see there again, uh, down by the fingerboard here, it got really dark. So I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, I wouldn't say that you're ever gonna get as dark as Rosewood uh, using this. I wouldn't say that, you know, after you know a month of this sitting around without being conditioned, if it won't lighten up as well, just as it dries out, but you know, Really, that being said, um, I do like how the fingerboard feels a lot now. It kind of got rid of that waxy feeling, uh, whether that was just because it needed a scrub. As you can see, I also polished all the frets on both guitars as well. But, you know, I'm happy with it. Um, I don't think we made any huge discoveries here today. Uh, probably just noted that you should be, uh, you know, treating your fretboards uh, as often as you can. So... With that, we'll leave it here for this week, and thank you very much. Remember to subscribe, hit those notifications, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks.